Hey guys, Blake here with another video. Lately I've had a few questions around how I've successfully bred my epistogrammas, so I'm going to let you in on a few little secrets today. Let's jump straight into the video. Okay, so I'm going to give you a broad overarching way that you can increase your chances of breeding most epistogrammas. There are some specialist types and stuff like that, but I'm going to be mainly talking about the ones that I've uh, kept and bred. So we're talking about Epistogramma agazizii, Epistogramma cacatoides, and Epistogramma mcmasteri today. And uh, hopefully I'll have bred Epistogramma pandura in the future. These are the four types that I keep at the moment. So the best way is to do a nice big water change over 50 percent and try and give them a little bit of cooler water if you can because it's going to simulate a big rainfall which more rain equals more habitat which means there's more food available so it's a great time to uh, procreate and make some more babies. The next thing that I'm sure to do is to feed some really nice high quality food. I like to put some frozen uh, spirulina brine shrimp in there because if you feed too many uh, bloodworms and things like that, they can get bloated. So just be careful if you are going to feed bloodworms that uh, those really high proteins can sometimes bloat the fish. And then I also like to put in some live baby brine shrimp. Now, this is a little tip. Uh, this availability of a small food, I think, signals to the fish that their babies will have food available. So once again, it's a good trigger for them to say, all right, look, it's a good time to make some babies now. So once we've got some clean water and some nice food, then the important thing I think is some habitat. So I like to keep lots of caves in my epistogramma tanks. I've got coconut huts, terracotta pots with holes drilled in them, and also some terracotta seed planters, which are basically left over from my bristlenose, but I've found that epistogrammas actually really quite enjoy breeding in these. And then once we've got heaps of caves in there, the next best thing is tannins. Uh, in, the, in the wild, epistogrammas live around heavily leaf littered areas. So I like to put in some oak leaves and also some catapa leaves, also known as Indian almond leaves. That's what you can see here in these tanks. I'm lucky enough to have an oak tree in my front yard. So, so I have a regular source of oak leaves, but uh, if you can only find catapa leaves in your area or online, they'll do just fine. I like to just cut them up so that there's a more of a scattering of leaf litter around the bottom of the tank. You might also see that I've got some alder cones in here, which are the small pine cone looking things. And uh, once again, this is just to add tannins and soften up the water. So 99% of the time when I do those four things, which are uh, clean water, nice food, some leaf litter and tannins and plenty of caves, I find that my epistogrammas uh, usually do the rest themselves and they're quite happy to sort of nestle into a little cave. and do their thing. So let me know in a comment down below if you've had success doing these or if you have some, some other tip or trick that uh, might do the job. And if you like this video, please like, subscribe and all that fun stuff. And I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.